students also got another tool besides apt, deselect. Okay. It can select packages to install on your system from the apt archives. And it's still dependent upon the Etsy apt source.list, so that has to be configured correctly. The nice thing is, is it does a lot of the other things that apt-get does. I kind of like apt-get a little bit better myself. Now, aptitude is a layer that sits over deselect. It is an interactive mode. It's kind of like deselect. It's another choice that we have in here. It combines the interactive features of deselect with the command line options of apt-get. And some people really like it. I'm, you know, I'm just not, I'm nonplussed about it. You have to make the choices for yourself. If you're within the Debian tree, you may say, hey, I like this and these are the reasons. But you have to dig down into that to decide to make those choices for yourself. Okay, so now let's talk about configurations. Before we talked about configurations for Red Hat Package Manager, we also have a main configuration file for Debian. Notice where this sits, Etsy dpackage, dpackage.cfg. It's not a .config file, it's not a .c file, it's a cfg file. That's their extension on the end, it's no big deal. It's still readable by you. Notice that it also can be in your home directory, that's that tilde there. The main configuration file that you want to pay attention to is the sources list and that's what you need, really need to verify. Remember that apt.conf controls the apt and deselect options. That's in a different place. Remember, these two rely on each other. So if you're trying to configure and you're having problems and you're saying you're using uh, dpackage, then go to dpackage config. But if you're using apt or deselect, you've got to do dpackage config and apt.conf. And yes, you have to know those names. Now, what I'd like to be able to do is I'd like to be able to take something that's an apt-get install and install it on a system that uses apt. It's an alien system too. And so we use the tool alien <laughs> to make your package manager software installation work correctly when you go from one to the other. This is that translation package. Now, there really isn't an, an equivalent in RPM that I understand. I mean, you could say CPO, but CPO outputs it and actually lets you look inside the files. This is going from, from apt-get to apt. Now, there's a couple of conditions on this tool. It doesn't always convert all of the dependencies perfectly, so you're going to have to dig into it and look at it. But if you need that package for some reason and it only comes one way and you do this deployment that way, you're going to have to start digging in. Now the other key condition here is talking about something that we haven't discussed so far, which is the tarball. The tarball is, it usually stands for tar or tape archive, which basically is the file directory structure of the original programming. Okay, here's the thing. Alien works if the original tarball is installed off the root directory. Okay? So, some tools don't do that. They do things a little bit differently. So, you have to be ready for that and be willing to deal with that. The other thing is, is that this tool doesn't use any database features. It doesn't look at any of the package information. It just rips down and it goes, give me the files. CPIO. You know, give me the files but this is converting between them. You're going to have to export, get this, and then rebuild this for your other package manager. Now, the cool thing is, is that you can have the old package manager to use a lot of this stuff, to work with a lot of this stuff that will allow you to translate. You can have that on your machine without using it. What I'm saying is, is if you've got a Debian operating system, you can have the Red Hat package manager there or the Red Hat packages there. It's just Debian's not going to look at it. So when we look at Alien, what we can do is we can convert from one to the other and prepare for this conversion. We take this Alien from Debian and turn it into RPM. Really cool thing about this is it does other things. 
like Stampede and Tarball. So if you've got a system that only uses tarballs, or that's the way that you're going to do deployments, and that's your choice, you can use what Debian has, you can use what RPM has, you can create this tool out of aliens that will actually get you the files that you need. Because you know that works on that system, but it doesn't work on your system, so okay, can I pluck that stuff out? And that's exactly what I want to do. And so here's a little bit of the syntax of alien down below, which will allow me to convert an RPM package to a Debian package. Also, notice here that we can use what's called the tarball to decompress this, pull out this information, move it to another location, and actually install. Use alien to RPM to actually create that. So we can take a tarball and turn it into an RPM if we want to. Uh, we're going to do a short little demonstration on Alien. You really have to have a package that you need and understand and want to convert. So in our demonstration, it's going to be short and quick, and it's not going to do too much sexy stuff for you other than to know that it could be installed on the other machine. I suggest that you take a little bit of time since you have two virtual machines. One of them is RPM based and one of them is Debian package manager based. I suggest that you actually do an export and, export and copy those files from one machine to another and see if they actually install using Alien. In other words, converting a package. See if it works. I mean, what's the worst thing that can happen? You blow up and you start all over again? You just click undo basically on the, uh, in the entire package. The nice thing that you can do with the virtual machines is, is you can take a snapshot. This is an opportunity to learn how to do snapshots so that you can then blow up your machine and revert without causing yourself too much pain. So let's take a look at that demo. Now, every once in a while, there are dependencies and there are conflicts. You've got to be ready for them. You've got to look for the missing libraries or the supported programs, the incompatibilities in libraries, duplicate files or features, mismatch names. I mean, all of this stuff happens to us. Be ready for it. I will tell you. That the first time that I took the LPIC exam in 2003, when I did it then, by the way, I failed both exams miserably the first time, just because I took them to see what was on them. And there was a lot more command line stuff than there is now, 10 years later. But what I knew about Linux at that point was dependencies were killing me. And it seemed like I spent all of my time dealing with dependencies. 10, 11 years later, a lot of that's changed and it's a lot more stable at this point. But there's still some work to be done for us because it's open source and we have to pay attention to what's going on. So take a little time to understand dependencies and things that fail and conflicts that are out there and don't get frustrated. Just roll back and say, hey look, 
the really the value in this is the support cost and not the actual software because the software is free.